everybody and w welcome to my channel hope you guys are all doing well so here's my review of Paul McCartney's new album McCartney 3 this is the CD I did order the vinyl copy as well and I did not get any of the many colored variants that are out there I just got the standard black because uh, that stuff I really don't uh, totally care about you know I just care about the music and the album and that's all I I really care about so this album kind of came as a surprise this year uh, it really did and I gotta tell you uh, I, I I really like it I'm gonna go into detail here but I really l like the album a lot I think I like it more than Egypt Station. In retrospect, when I look at Egypt Station, I find Egypt Station slightly overhyped, uh, slightly overproduced. There's a thing out there that, you know, lately Paul's been hooking himself up with some like hot producers. And when he hooks himself up with hot producers, yes, Paul is the final say, but sometimes the hot producers tend to overproduce him a bit. Um, Paul is a pretty much uh, as a capable producer of himself. I do think that he does need that second ear sometimes. Uh, but he produced all of the post Beatles stuff himself up to Tug of War. Then he did a trilogy of albums with George Martin. Which brings us now to McCartney 3. Now for those that don't know, the McCartney concept going back to the first McCartney album in 1970, is basically Paul in the studio having a bunch of fun. He's playing everything himself. He's producing the tracks, and not even really with the intention of creating an album, just to get shit done, you know, to get stuff done. You know, I, I can't sit on my ass here, so I got to record some stuff. And then, holy shit, I have enough stuff here for an album. I might as well put it out. That's essentially what the McCartney album was. And at the time... Rolling Stone gave it a good review until Jan Wenner said, no, 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 give it a bad review. <laughs> and they went and, and gave it a bad review. But it, that has since had a, a reappraisal. I like that album a lot. McCartney 2, 1980, which came at the end of, of Wings, again, the same concept. Paul plays everything himself, produces everything, and that was another thing. He just had some time uh, at his Scottish, at the studio on his... Scottish Farm, and then his other studio, I think in Sussex, um, just had some time, and he started experimenting with synths and came up with a really crazy album. Some people love it, some people hate it. I tend to love it. Uh, I get the humor on some of the stuff. Uh, I never used to admit that I like bogey music, but I get the humor in bogey music. It's a funny track, especially with his slow down vocals, which are Everybody bogey, bogey. And the repeat echo that is so obvious that overpowers his initial lead vocal and is sort of, you got it, you got it. You know, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. So I get the humor in it. And it's it, it, it really is a experimental record that I'm surprised he did just sign to Columbia in America. And Back to the Egg, the final Wings album, didn't do that well. Uh, as the other Wings albums had, and then following it with this weird McCartney 2 album, on Col his second album for Columbia in America. It was still EMI elsewhere, but Columbia in America. I'm surprised Columbia didn't drop him, <laughs> but he's Paul McCartney. But it truly is a, a, an, a, an album to divide people, and that that's why I love it. It's a crazy album. Which brings us now to McCartney 3, done in Rockdown, as Paul calls it. And... Again, this is Paul by himself kind of cheating with sliding on there because Abe is on that one and I think Rusty's on that one as well. Uh, but uh, it still is just him recording some songs, taking some stuff that he had on the shelf, dusting it off so he could actually do something, then realizing, oh, I have an album. And honestly, I really like this album. You're not going to get anything in the way of Maybe I'm Amazed, okay, uh, like on the first McCartney album, so people shouldn't compare it to the 1970 McCartney. This is something new here, but I like it a lot. I think it, it flows together very well. It's got the experimental side on it. 
Um, and it feels like a complete album again. Paul, as I said a long time ago, took the lessons of Sgt. Pepper and he translated a, a lot of that into to most of his post-Beatles work. Having some segues, maybe some link tracks, and a, a couple of, uh, of reprises here and there on his albums to make it seem like these separate songs all hang together somehow. Well, he does that here. Just to go through some of the tracks here briefly, Long-Tailed Winter Bird, the opening track, begins with this uh, beautiful acoustic lick that is reprised at the end of the album. And it's a much more experimental track. Well, the lyrics are are, are, are are very simple. Do you do you miss me? But it's got a groove to it, man. It really has got a punch to it that I love. Find My Way, the single, that is such a great track. Um, I love the chorus about anxiety. In fact, I think the chorus, I don't think Paul, uh, Paul hasn't written such a strong chorus like that in a long time. Um, false ending. You think it's over, and then it begins with this nice sort of ambient, with the groove, but this these nice ambient textures at the end, which I love. Pretty Boys, kind of a joke track, but it's acoustic. Kind of reminds me of famous groupies from Wings' London Town album. I like it because it sounds serious, but the lyrics are very humorous about these, I want to call it a tribute to Instagram influencers is what I want to do. Um... Women and Wives, probably my least favorite track, but I would love to write a least favorite track like that. It's I like how the, the voice he's you know singing in. He doesn't usually sing in this kind of women and wives low voice like he did. It's kind of difficult for him. We all know his voice is shaky, but I think he's in pretty good voice on this album because the songs are written for the voice. Lavatory Lil is a great kick-ass rocker the lyrics seem kind of corny at first until you kind of try and peel away the layers and figure out who the hell is he talking about <clears throat> i think i know who he's talking about the most experimental track on the record is deep deep feeling i've heard some people say that they like to skip the track i originally felt the track went on too long it's over eight eight minutes long until i decided to listen to it with headphones on when you listen to that track with headphones, you have so many layers of things going on um, as he keeps on repeating the phrases and choruses over and over, and then more instruments are being added when you have the headphones on. Then there's backwards vocals towards the end, and again, another false ending, and then a, a complete you know, a resolution. So it took me a couple of listens to get into, but as I got into it with headphones, it really had worked for me. Sliding, that's a rocker. That is a rocker. Um, with Abe and Rusty on it. I want to say it sounds like a leftover from Egypt Station and he kind of did some you know, uh, some cleanup work on it. But I like the lyrics about flying and uh, kind of a drug song. At least you, you appear it to be a drug song. But it's a nice, raunchy uh, um, rocker for me. The Kiss of Venus, another beautiful Paul ballad. But what makes that song for me is how the harpsichord comes in in the middle. He's got this beautiful harpsichord solo that comes out of nowhere that to me just takes that track slightly over the edge. I love it. Uh, you know, Seize the Day, another great bluesy rock around here. Deep Down, Paul in his party mode. Uh, that one, I think, just goes on a tad too long, although it's within five minutes, but I like it. It's got a good groove to it. Um, it's it, it's a party tune, Paul, Paul in dance mode. But then you close the album with uh, a reprise of Winter Bird, which segues into the final track, When Winter Comes, which I think was started during the Flaming Pie sessions. Let me just sample some of these new lyrics here, because... I think this is one of the best ballads Paul has ever written. Verse 3. I must find the time to plant some trees in the meadow where the river flows. In time to come, they'll make a good shade for some poor soul. So not him. He's not going to be around to uh, appreciate that, but somebody else will be around to appreciate that. Oh, my heart. That is such a, a great tune. 
a great, great, great tune, which shows that Paul still has got some great tunes in him. Um, I know some people felt they were underwhelmed by this album. I know some people, you know, it, it's Paul. But considering I know that this album was just essentially music that he made for himself and nobody else, and he wasn't answering to anybody, um, I really like this album. I thought he took some chances here. And the good thing is, after a long time, and like I said, sometimes Paul needs that second ear to say yay, yes or no. But on this album, I'm just, I'm happy that for the, in such a long time, it's pure Paul. Writing, producing, playing all the instruments. Uh, this is totally Paul. Uh, where this ranks in the trilogy of albums, I put it under the first McCartney album. McCartney 2 is still the third, if I'm going to rank them 1, 2, and 3. But I still like McCartney, too. I like this sort of weird, esoteric side of Paul that he rarely lets out. Um, so for me, this is a very good album. I would rank it up there with one of my favorite albums of the year. I've played this so far more than Egypt Station in the first three days I've had it. So I really like this album a lot. Um, and I, I know it's not going to be for everybody, uh, but... Um, I wasn't, I went into this being underwhelmed. And I, instead I came out being totally satisfied. So if I'm going to give this a rating, which I don't usually do, but if I would give this a rating, I'd say it's about an A minus, B plus A minus. Listen to it from beginning to end. It's got a flow to it. I really love it. So that's my review of McCartney 3. Thank you very much. Leave me some of your thoughts and keep them professional as always and talk to you soon.